I found. I'm, we're going to be jumping around because I'm just pulling quotes from my mind. I don't feel like reading it all to get to the parts, but after the second time around, I was like, all right. All right. We there. might want to hit. It was kind of sus the whole time I was listening to it. Yeah, if it's fucking real. Because we take everything with a grain of salt here, buddy. Right. We're not drinking the Kool-Aid. This is the Forbidden Scrolls. We're reading it to gain information. We're not dropping our pants and letting them enter, okay? Come on. So, if this is a fabrication, it would have probably works. occurred on... I don't know. The author... The author's obviously into spiritual topics, so that, he's the first suspect where it's like, maybe he just condensed all of his spiritual ideas, especially like Prison Planet. Like, that's all over the internet. It's everywhere. You know, reincarnation, yeah. beware of the white light. The, so, behold, like, that, that, those horse, concepts you know, are already behold, there. Behold, white horse, whatever that fucking, you know, that famous... So, thing. this, you know, if you want to be super skeptical, your first uh, scapegoat is, is Lawrence Spencer. And you say, okay, Lawrence put his ideas together in like a really masterful presentation and then he wrote it in a QA and a uh, style story um, or Lawrence Spencer did get a transcript from somebody else but that someone else wasn't actually this Matilda nurse that was at Roswell it was just somebody that was also into spiritual concepts and they wrote their thing they wrapped it by saying oh this came from this was I got this transcript because I was at Roswell and I talked to an alien through telepathy. Um, look, maybe she wasn't even at Roswell, but maybe Matilda had this alien experience at home. Maybe she had nothing to do with Roswell, but she still had a telepathic contact with the alien. This Q and A still could have happened with like all with all those different variations. Um, but I think the Roswell thing was legit. Um, I think that like a real a crap did land. And I think that this, like, it fits in the story. Oh, dude, the way she in the a way nice she's, way. The way she said really she good got way. the paper, the way she got this transcript out of Roswell makes she, no sense. No, you don't. You don't. At the very end of the interview, she she says. She said, like, during the entire thing, at the very end, they would give her periodically every transcript for her to read over to for her own sake, so that she was ready for the next interview. And then she even got like transcripts to show the alien. And every time she'd fold them up and put it in her breast pocket. And at the very end of the interview, they were she was never. They never out. asked. They never that. asked. Well, no, I'm for saying that, that makes no out. sense. Dude, that actually makes the, the most high sense. military That's how it works, installation. Uh, sometimes humans are fucking weird, man. You know, we're not perfect. We're just like <laughs> in the lost in the sauce. And, uh, they're all buzzing and shit, yeah. printing out papers, and like paper gets caught in your. Sh you know what I'm saying? Like that's how humans work. I that's bro, they why, really that's put why. her in a witness protection <laughs> program, but they forgot to check her pocket. I don't know. Dude. Like, of course it's possible. Like, I'm just pointing out how dude, people are bringing home Nazi guns and shit. <laughs> you know? well, yeah, that's <laughs> different. That's just cool. <laughs> I believe it, bro. I believe. I believe that the... to me let it, lent it more credence. You know, it did. But it's also something the skeptic would say. Okay, the reader would ask that question, how the, how did she get these transcripts out? If it was military, that shouldn't be possible. Maybe they would say, okay, the writer, <laughs> they would say that the writer threw that in to explain that to make it more believable. That's that's just how skeptics do it. Right, they if you put it or if you don't put it, there's going to be like, why didn't she put it? Why didn't she explain it? If she puts mm -hmm. it, oh, she said it cause, because, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's... it's all right, Reverse, like so, so going back to the uh, the whole where right before Gary went to go piss, we were talking about you know war in heaven, angels fighting angels, all this shit. Comparing to the Urantia book, we are leaning more towards Michael and the use universal cosmic organization as being be benevolent, and Lucifer and the rebellion being malevolent. I'm just. This is from a. I'm skipping ahead right now, but it just came to my mind. I want to get it off my head. She's explaining what the old empire is. It says on the other hand, the civilization set up on Earth by the old empire prison system were very different from the civilization of the old empire itself, which is an electronic space opera, atomic powered conglomeration of earlier civilizations that were conquered with nuclear weapons and colonized by Isbees from another galaxy. The bureaucracy that controlled the former old empire was from an ancient space opera society. 
run by a totalitarian confederation of planetary governments, regulated by brutal social, economic, and political hierarchy, with a royal monarch as its figurehead. That's how Lucifer spoke about the cosmic organization. Mm -hmm. That right. that part is a little bit sus, for right. sure. Right. I just want to point that out so you understand. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking the old empire almost might be Michael's fucking squad. So that here's 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 my rebuttal on that. The old empire. This is either the domain is either some offshoot that has to do with after. The rebellion, um, and it's like some, it's either in the middle, or it is rebellious, uh, or she, the old empire she's talking about was Lucifer's system. So we're talking Lucifer's system, 10,000 planets. See, that's what I keep, um, that, that's what I keep thinking about. Is the old empire Lucifer's system, or is she referring to the old empire as... I think it is. I think the old empire is Lucifer's system because she said that this old system is keeping up these four screens. But I don't. It, she there's says also some theories that thousand years ago, four hundred thousand years ago, the she old empire. That? Yes, that's when Caligastia fucking landed. Well, if you go to two hundred eight thousand BC on this timeline, it says the old empire invasion force conquered the area with nuclear weapons. So, is that very Jesus-like? I don't know, man. Well, Caligastia, so Timothy Wiley's book says Caligastia gave the humans nuclear power and, like, let them fight each other. I don't know. I don't know if you can put this whole story through the lens of UB and it make it make sense. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but the Anunnaki are mentioned, and that, that's, like, a pretty clear... We know that the Anunnaki are most connected to the staff. And so there is some connections. But, yeah, you're right. It's a little bit loose, but trying to figure out this overlap is spicy. Yeah, no, it's cool to try and make connections, but I think Holy at a shit. certain point, this okay. sounds like just an offshoot story. Well, the 400,000 years ago is two paragraphs above the paragraph I just read about talking about the old empire being a space opera with a royal monarch at its, as its figurehead. It says, these, these Isbees are mixed together with earlier inhabitants of Earth who came from another star system more than 400,000 years ago to establish civilizations of Atlanta and Lemuria. Those civilizations vanished beneath tidal waves caused by planetary polar shifts. That's a that's a I mean they're explaining it differently, but that's literally the staff. Dalmatia was mm -hmm. went underwater. Okay. Um, many thousands of years before the current prison population started to arrive. Apparently, the Isbees from those star systems were the source of the original Oriental races of Earth. Interesting, right? Beginning in Australia. Um. I don't know. I'm not going to talk about it. <clears throat> and then they go on to talk about how those Isbees are part of the space opera civilization. Elsewhere in this transcript, he, uh, Errol says, her, the domain only entered our sector of the universe 10,000 years ago. That's it. 10,000 years ago. And then they had to, they had to like consult databases and records to figure out all this information that we're talking about. So they're looking at it mm -hmm. from like they just stumbled upon the scene, seeing like what's what's Earth? What, oh, look at these human divine beings. Oh, whoa, they're in a fucked up state. Oh, whoa, why are they in quarantine? You know, maybe they're gonna talk shit on the way we run shit over here. I don't know. You know. Yeah, dude, the, the old empire, this is how it's described. I know we're kind of going all over the place. Here. Yeah, go all over the place. That's cool. This is a paragraph. It says, <laughs> The attempt to teach certain beings on Earth the truth that they are themselves is bees was a part of the plan to overthrow the fictional, metaphorical, anthropo anthropomorphic uh, pen panoply? Pen panoply? How do you say that word? P -A -N -O. Panoply. Oh, yeah, panoply of gods created by the, quote, old empire mystery cult called the Brothers of the Serpent known in Egypt as the priests of Amun. They are a very ancient secret society within the old empire. So it seems to me like the old empire is not the good guys. It does not seem like they are trying to show us this so-called... So, well, they're painting yeah. them from the narrative as the bad guys. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay, but but get that. The brothers, of the, the brothers of the Serpent. This is a good link yep. to figure out who the old empire is. The Brothers of the Serpent. That sounds like, like the Midware rebel 
angel order that are like teaching that's where like egypt gets a lot of its like ancient technology you have okay. these like rebel personalities They've who are just like doing their own thing their and so credit. what i'm saying is that's what the brothers of the serpent was at the high level it was like the rebel midwares rebel angels and caligastia's crew mm. um and so that's the old empire the and that's that's where i think that's where i think that the old empire is the is the fallen order under lucifer's domain she even mentions the dragon and later in the okay and and we have to keep this kind i know this is hard because we're talking about wild shit you have to keep the the contextual point of view frame of reference in mind i pulled up another quote she told me that the domain expeditionary force first entered the into the milky way galaxy very recently only about 10,000 years ago you know 10,000 years ago ain't shit compared to the yeah. planetary history of the urantia so these are like newcomers from a different sector of the universe who maybe just got new ships and were able to explore a new part of the universe stumble upon Earth and you know how the Keys of Enoch says that the higher intelligence can use Mazar radiation lasers and hit our pyramids and get a full database of information on our planetary history <laughs> ethnographic history, <laughs> geographic history so let's assume these are newcomers 10,000 years ago, show up on planet Earth what the fuck is this place? Beam into the they're pyramids. reading the cliff notes they're reading the cliff notes and they're like oh my god <laughs> our planet's fucked up dog <laughs> You should, so you're saying 500,000 year, years ago a super advanced alien race from Orion called Caligastia landed decided to do his own plan, planetary thing? They'd be like, nope, that's fucked up. And he's part of this organization? Nope, that's fucked up. I mm -hmm. feel like almost they're just like you know, they're just calling out all the fuck up that they see in our planetary history. And they, and they, can, might they be, can't they... distinguish they can't distinguish Caligastia from a rebel or a universal cause, yeah because he was sent by the universal then possible. he rebelled you know so the old empire could be a mixture of both caligastia pre-rebellion and caligastia post-rebellion right mm. i know it gets gnarly sorry reviewers Definitely not, try, try to keep so up no, i got the page <laughs> i got the page for this the next part yeah. um you want me to give a little overview yeah, on her yeah. education yeah right once she starts off after the books yeah, so we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, what happens is that, uh, so as of now, Errol, the alien being, is only doing telepathy with this Matilda, the nurse. Um, and it's limited. It's lim It's going to be 49. Um, it's limited, but 45, page 45 is the reading lessons. Um, so what, what ends up happening is that um, uh, the nurse and the crew they bring Matilda a bunch of books to read so that they they because the military people they want to hear like English they're like okay let this thing talk English so we can get a better communication because they're also skeptical because they're like it's only telepathy through her this is annoying um, and they want answers and they have to go through the nurse to to get them in this telepathic thing so they give her a bunch of books you know encyclopedias even like uh, fiction stories and I think this actually has a lot to show Errol once she reads them she says that her favorite books were Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Don Quixote de la Mancha and 1001 Nights um, she said the authors of these stories showed that it is more important to have great spirit and imagination than great skill or power and to me that reveals something about Errol's character and her motivations I actually was like, dang, I need to read those books so I can figure out what inspired her in those books. Um, and I still might end up doing that. But So, so that phrase, uh, it's more important to have great spirit and imagination than great skill or power. You know, even though she talked about her civilization as being like powerful or being the best, this is, this, is a, this is a value. This is a value that exists in her mind. It is more important to have great spirit and imagination than great skill or power. And to me, that is, like, a very high ideal. I mean, that's, like, the childlike, you know, innocence of exploration and learning, you know, before you get into the power dynamics of, like, ego and control. Uh, and, like, e this, I don't know, this domain system seems to understand uh, the individual great spirit and imagination value um, alongside how to manage your resources well and create a stable system that isbees can grow up in. 
Um, so yeah, so so moving on now, she's read these books, and um, I love this quote. On the afternoon of the 16th day, Arrow and I sat next to each other as she read. She closed the last page of a book she was reading and placed it aside. I was about to hand her the next book from the large pile, waiting to be read, when she turned and said or thought to me, I am ready to speak now. Okay. At first, I was, a li- I was a little confused by the remark. I gestured for her to continue, and she began to teach me my first lesson. So this is where we pick up. This transcript is after Errol knows English. She's still talking telepathically to Matilda and only to Matilda um, because she doesn't actually, she doesn't like the motivations of the other military personnel who, like, send in questions. Um, and so, but now the, um, the telepathy is a lot closer to, um, so what it is is now the alien being has a translation matrix for our uh, word symbols um, because she's read the books and, and has, like, a, now her own personal database of, of meaning. Because our symbols, yeah, we assign our own meaning to it. It's it's all it's very relative, but we do have a consensus on what words mean. So now the communication has less distortion, and it's also more organized in English, like paragraphs and and thought concepts. So yeah, more new, more uh, nuance, more fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'll start off reading. Um, it. Yeah. All, all right, right, let's do it. Forty nine. This is where it gets fucking juicy, boys, because she's been saying power. Love, control. <laughs> now she's. I was part of this expeditionary force in 1980. Mm. <laughs> right. This is like this is like when Vision, you know, wakes up and then he like he gets adjusted and then he's just like, oh, 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 oh. Um, you know, just like blowing away the Avengers. So here we go. Um, what would you like to say, Errol? I ask. I have been a part of the Domain Expeditionary Force in this sector of space for several thousand years. However, I have not personally had intimate contact with beings on Earth since 5965 BCE. It is not my primary function to interact with inhabitants of plants within the domain. I am an officer, pilot, and engineer with many duties to perform. Nonetheless, although I am fluent in 347 other languages within the domain, I have not been exposed to your English language. The last Earth language with which I was conversant was the Sanskrit language of the Vedic hymns. At that time, I was a member of a mission sent to investigate the loss of a domain base located in the Himalaya Mountains. An entire battalion of officers, pilots, communications, and administrative personnel disappeared and the base destroyed. It's Tibet. Yeah, dude. I mean, what what do you think of trying to land on a quarantined planet? Right, they probably didn't know. They might not have known that at that point. Fuck um, find out. You know what exactly? <laughs> <laughs> several, several million years ago, I was trained and served as an investigation, data evaluation, and program development officer for the domain. Because I was experienced in that technology, I was sent to Earth as part of the search team. One of my duties involved interrogation of the human population that inhabited the adjoining area at that time. Many of the people in that region reported sighting Vimanas or spacecraft in the sky. And a quick note here, the Vimana term is actually, that's that's the English translation of a word within the the Sanskrit text. I forget which one. It's probably the Rig Veda or whatever the other one is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the Vedas, those texts, they, they talk about Vimanas, which the descriptions sound like UFOs and spacecraft. So you'll see UFO people like always mention that as like ancient alien proof. And um, uh, for, for further nuance on the subject of Vimana, I talk about it with my brother Derek Samaris, Disco Steed. Um, Vimana specifically could, might have been, or probably could have been UFOs that do not have interplanetary um Ability, travel, travel. Yeah, they, they only yeah. stay on planet Earth. They're restricted to planetary space, so they can like float, but only into like our atmosphere, and then go really fast around the planet. But they have to stay on planet. They're basically speeder bikes. Yeah, straight up. But they'll right, they'll, they'll, uh, make the, they'll make the local monkeys fucking go crazy. <laughs> Always. The local following monkeys. the logic. <laughs> Follow, following the logical extension of evidence, testimony, observation, as well as the absence of certain evidence, 
I led my team to the discovery that there were still old Empire ships and well-hidden old Empire installations in this solar system of which we had been completely unaware. Damn. You and I were unable to communicate in your language because I personally have not yet been exposed to your language. However, now that I have scanned the books and material you provided me, this data has been relayed to our space station in this region and processed by our communications officer through our computers. It has been translated into my own language and relayed back to me in a context that I can think with. I have also received additional information from the files stored in our computers about the English language and domain records concerning Earth civilization. Wow, that, that gives you insight uh, that, on why that she is... was reading everything, and remember, she read the entire Bible without question or comment, because she wasn't fucking reading to, like, ask questions. She was trans- scanning, and transmitting it back She's to transmitting the text. And they're fucking giving her thought forms, like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Bro. Dude, special It's option. literally like, it's that, ancient, it's that ancient scroll thing where they go in with their phone and, like, get as many pictures as you can. Uh, but yeah, she's like she's digitizing all all this information is, and actually I didn't really realize this, but like she sends the information up, and they actually send her like the tr- the English translation back. So I actually think that she's thinking what she wants to tell them. It's beaming up to the space station, and they're like, okay, this is our translation for you based on our like best approximation of how the English language is structured. Yeah, they're they're behind the computer fucking <laughs> doing the research, translating, making the fucking thought form, then blasting an envelope of light to her. She's got, like, okay. she's got a whole team of guys in the chairs yes, who up. are doing their research. Yep, um, straight up. Yeah, that's, I, I love it. Blowing Mazars um, into the pyramids and gathering data from the South American <laughs> pyramid, from the Giza pyramid, just like... Right, they're like... We have half a millisecond to pull this data. Beam, <laughs> beam that pyramid. Beam yeah, that one. Get exactly. It. Get it. Get that data. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now I am prepared to give you certain information that I feel will be of great value to you. I will tell you the truth. Although truth is relative to all of the truth, I wish to share with you as honestly and accurately as possible truth as I see it within the boundaries of my integrity to myself, to my race, and without violating my obligations to the organization I serve and have sworn to uphold and protect. A little formality Very respectable there. way to very, form it. Very formality yeah. there. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Okay, I thought, will you answer questions from the gallery now? The gallery is the, the military personnel who are, like, behind the glass watching. Uh, no, I will not answer questions. I will provide information to you that I think will be beneficial to the well-being of the immortal spiritual beings who comprise humanity and that will foster the survival of all the myriad life forms and the environment of Earth. That is, it is part of my mission to ensure the preservation of Earth. Right up the keys. Um, wow. Just Very started, confident. Man. But yeah. not the humans on Earth, the Earth itself. Mm. Preservation of Earth. Yeah, good we are question. the Earth. Mm. Jews getting paranoid. <laughs> 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 We're here to save the Earth. Trust no like, Winks to his boy. <laughs> Like we're all like, yeah, but, <laughs> you know that old school, you know that old school movie where it's like to serve man, like the aliens land, and the, they they present their things and they're like things like we're here to serve man, and all the humans are like, yeah, and at the end they realize it's a cookbook like how to serve man, like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's a oh it's a uh, Twilight Zone episode. All right. Here we go. Personally, it is my conviction that all sentient beings are immortal spiritual beings. This includes human beings. For the sake of accuracy and simplicity, I will use a made-up word, is be, because the primary nature of an immortal being is that they live in a timeless state that is, and the only reason for their existence is that they decide to be. Okay. Crack cocaine term. Fucking love it. Is be. That's what we are. Like, I, dude, I was tripping on mushrooms when I was about 14 years old one time. This is before... <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> before, before I dove into the Urantia book, I, I had no understanding of the Urantia book. I read a half a paper and read the back of it and put it back down. Okay, so I'm not going to claim being Urantia book right at the time. Um, Pop some shrooms with my homies, and I kept saying, like... Like, um... Like... I am. I was like, we are. It is. 
like these words like am is be are those are all the same word but just different right they're different facets of the same gem it's it means yeah. to exist right i am you are you know to be it just means existence right like you exist it is i am that i am i am right what is your existential identity? I am that I existential am. right there is no definition for that and like that's interesting because i i hit that shit on my own as a young as a young nigga and now these motherfuckers talking about like <laughs> is being shit like, okay for sure i was on some shit <laughs> i was on the right track yo back in the day. Got that let's go yeah and bro i mean i i had a profound realization somewhat similar to that not on mushrooms but um <laughs> Dude, I grew up with the Old Testament. You you know you know what it is. Old Empire. Um, and so there's this phrase. There's this phrase in in uh, in the story Moses, of Moses and the burning, burning bush. bush. And this bush, this burning bush, uh, says, um, am, or Moses says, what what should I call you? Yeah, and and the voice responds, I am that I am. Dude. And this, I never questioned this. I was just like, oh, okay. You had that um, too, but dude. Like, I did too. What the fuck? That's weird, dude. <laughs> keep going sorry no i mean i it, you know growing up growing up i i didn't really think beyond like what that meant and it was always presented as a mystery it was never told it was never described that like look at the words i am be these are these are states of being they're uh it's like past tense present tense current yes um maybe that's not maybe i'm wrong on the past present thing but it's like i am states of being these uh there's a specific term in language that it's like what those words are i kind of forget what it what it is what that term is in Spanish, um, it's but, ser to be. I don't know what it is in English. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a profound statement, and you know, people talk about you know what well what is God? What is the qualities of God? When you're talking about an existential viewpoint, it's like, and it's also like the first individual thought that you can have before all the other thoughts arrive yes. in in your in consciousness before anything can manifest as, as like awareness the first thought is awareness i am actually so the first state of being is just like am mm. and then and then you get i, I am. am and that's the first that being. is the first individualization of thought. manifested out of the unqualified absolute mm. and think about so think about this right the in first qualified of, thought phonetically just go like this open your mouth and just don't 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 move your tongue am ma'am Right, it's kind of like it's the first word, am, man. Or it's more like rom yeah. or om, om, rom, like the first and om. am. They're all they're all they're all iterations of the same intonation. What the fuck? This, which is the original intonation of our voice? It's am, 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 om, om, rom, and rom is just in Sanskrit. Adam, Adam, and then I am is almost like the epiphany. It's like I am. You know, it's like I. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're getting a little kooky. No. That's think a good question. I, don't, I get, I get what you're trying to get to, languages. but I also think the first noise that comes out of your mouth when you just like breathe air out is also based on like culture. Like everyone has different onomatopoeia, so so I, right, I, I don't right. entirely know how to from, how to define like what the first sound is that that the humans would vocalize. Do it yourself. Um, um, um. But you're right. Um, I mean, now you're depends, talking about. But the it's humans. all just. Fuck. Um, it's it's a different you know different slight different tones it could be um 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 but don't move your tongue you know what i mean that's yeah. the first sound like if you were an animal think back okay. before we evolved into like uh, making these different dances with our tongue the first sound that an animal maybe a human would make it's just close to um um but think about yeah that. but bro my dog just she, the first thing she does is bark she's not doing this um thing that's so. why they're not conscious. A, a dog doesn't. <laughs> a dog doesn't think about it. Like th- what I'm trying to say is like our consciousness correlates with our language. So first, most likely when we were when we were developing consciousness was most likely when we were developing language. So like think about the first caveman. This is hypothetical, obviously. The first caveman that came into a sense of I amness. He was probably like, um, um. And he started to realize what language was, and then that's how we kind of, that's how we formulate thought in a, in a way. I don't know, I'm not really making much sense right now, I understand, but like, just think about like, how at first was the word. Like, think about that story was like, consciousness is correlated with our language. 
Um, so if you can think about like how we language started, you can think about how consciousness started in a way. That's kind of what I'm getting at. And consciousness, mm -hmm. um, consciousness started and language started with just like a sense of um, I, and then everything works off of that. So every thought works off of that, and every every aspect of our language works off of just like a sense of I am, I am. So we all work off of, like you said, we all work off of that, that individual sense of I amness, but also our language works off of a sense of that I amness. See what I'm getting at? So like our consciousness mm -hmm. and language are they're intertwined in a way, and I do believe that the first word was. Uh, <laughs> or it's like a ohm. Oh, okay. Ohm. I just had a thought. I just had a thought where it's like, so when I do ohm as as a mantra for a meditative uh, and a nervous system tool, yeah. um, it it spans the full range of uh, the full of my vocal range. So uh, the a the a sound is the lower, and you actually feel it vibrate like uh, near like the root or like the the sacral region. And when you get to Ooh and hue, that's the heart, and then mm, you feel it vibrate up at the head. So it, it it's the tonal region, and so you could you could kind of say that all the sounds that we can potentially make in language are contained within the ohm because ohm goes okay. from the low the lower uh, ranges to the higher, um, um, and so it, it encompasses all the individuations within that. So that definitely does match the what we just talked about, about, you know, individuation, and that's why they call it the primal v vibration. Uh, yeah. Anyway. And to bring it full circle, because we're forbidden scrolls, shout out to my new age isbies. Um, <laughs> the Keys of Enoch talks about on a galactic level, planets have a scientific discipline based off vocal intonations. I know it sounds wild, but it even goes at the end of the chapter. They give they give they go into detail and they say like even when new babies are born on advanced planets, when they give that first ah, they have like machines that record that because it's a first brand new blueprint like fingerprint imprint of a vocal intonation from an ISB in the cosmos and from that like that gives them insight onto how to create new technology. Yeah, interesting. Whatever. Let's get back into it. Where we at? All right, we on page fifty and uh, the last <clears throat> paragraph. No matter how lowly their station in a society, every isbi deserves the respect and and treatment that I myself would like to receive from others. Each person on earth continues to be an isbi, whether they are aware of this fact or not, and that is the golden rule. So I think we do know which side this isbi is on. Um. All right. All right. Just to counteract that. <laughs> <laughs> Even a motherfucker who has a who's a piece of shit can walk into like a nice gathering and be like, "I'm a human and I deserve the same fucking respect that everybody else does." Okay, because they know they're about to bring some bullshit. I feel you. Okay, yeah, you're right. It could be a psyop. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying. To work oh, it's psyop. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You're trying. You're trying to make sure. Yeah, you're trying to put her as a rebel. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Oh, I'm on the I'm on the other side. You're definitely dude, you my lean first, towards that. I do lean towards that, dude. My first <laughs> listen through, I thought the opposite. My second listen through, I was like, hold uh -huh. up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I heard that four hundred thousand years. Saying, I was like, what the yeah. Fuck? As soon as she started saying that they sell engineered organisms to other planets and governments, I was like, that's a life carrier. Uh, I, I don't have a clue about that. I don't have a clue about that. I don't have a clip about that. I don't, I mean, sell... There's monetary gain of... We do that on Earth, though. We, like, sell... Domain. It's not... No, but their There's... currency is different. They're not using money. It's, like... They're using adrenochrome. <laughs> no. It's I'm resources. It's life... Yeah, <laughs> life carriers that are the most qualified get chosen. Right? So they can sell their product. Look, we can sell, like, uh, DNA uh, alteration, you know, like, CRISPR programs. Like, here's a recipe to make... To alter your plants and grow a better season next okay, year, like that, they're just true. doing that on a larger scale with animals as well. We say do that's plants. true. Why did they have the whole dialogue going into about how they created parasites and animals that needed to reproduce because they created carnivores? And then oh, there's basically that's such a good spot. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. That's a good spot, dude. That's probably going to be episode, dude. That's a I need a. 
<laughs> I want to address that spot too. The whole, so the sense. whole life carrier angle from this paper is crazy. How they talk about the but that's the domain didn't do that, right? No, the yeah, domain, the domain no, that did yeah, that. It, did. it wasn't the domain. It said that was that was the old empire, right? No, yeah. they said it's, bugs and blossoms, which is what they called the company. Yeah, but that, that, that wasn't their that company. That wasn't their company, though. I don't know, I gotta listen to it he's talking. It he's like he's they're, saying they're that it was actually they're just, they're they, just that was like crazy. That was a crazy new thing recorded. that they tried to do. Yeah. And so, so here, what I'm picturing is that like the rebel faction ended up touching the domain in some way, and that way was probably like, okay, the rebel faction after the rebellion happened, and they got the sector. They're like, yo, we ramped up the conflict on our planet. We made them carnivores where they all kill each other. And, like, we, we put a reincarnation trap so we keep all the souls here and they keep evolving. Like, check it out. The, um, the energy on this planet is insane, but we think it's, we think it's a better way. And then it's they try to sell the that technology. Mm-hmm. Like, Earth, you know, the 36 planets that are, like, quarantined, they try and sell the data to the domain. And the domain's like, this oh, is crazy. Why, what are you doing? Party. But the domain's like, they're not, they're not like... At the start of this, they're not gonna be like stopping them, but they they're like she sides. tells that story. She tells the story of like, yeah, this data that's coming from these planets that are using this conflict method. Yeah, because you have to remember there are neutral parties in the war of heaven, which is interesting. All right, we're gonna skip all this background shit and keep reading it. Rebels. Uh, so what, picking up on 52? Yeah. I'm gonna go for, like, what, another 20, 30 minutes max. Right. Yeah, okay. I need to get out. And then we gotta talk about Chicago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. About that. <laughs> Alright. Page 52. Uh, Errol told me her reasons for coming to Earth and for being in the area of the 509th Bomber Squadron. She was sent by her superior officers to investigate the explosions of nuclear weapons which have been tested in New Mexico. Her superiors ordered her to gather information from the atmosphere that could be used to determine the extent of radiation and potential harm this might cause to the environment. During her mission, the spacecraft was struck by lightning, which caused her to lose control and crash. That sounds so that's a classic concept. Yeah. What? Oh, about the lightning? Yeah, no, that's a duck. She explains that though. It is yeah. ex- it is expounded upon. She says that like even though they have high technology, there's still circumstances that they can't control that can mess up, you know, the tech. So, um yeah, I get explained. that I get the idea. It's like they're so smart that they can travel the universe, but yeah. their craft gets struck down by lightning. Yeah. But actually it doesn't she said it temporarily disabled the craft. Yep. So she said it temporarily, the lightning didn't destroy them, it temporarily disconnected the electronics from the operator's consciousness, which lost control of the craft, and then it crashed into the ground. Yeah, it, it, it terminated the connection between the pilot and the craft. It took them out of It was of like a power, it, it short flipped circuit. the power, yeah, it's short dangerous circuit. for them, I guess. That's why they don't want to come here. Yeah, the, okay, so to expound upon that, um, she also, um, this is interesting because it pops up numerous times in the ufology and the ancient alien and the Roswell Area 51 lore. You've heard the whole theory that in Area, Area 51, the UFO crashed because we shot radar at them. Remember? You've heard that story? Like, the radar was able to interfere with their ship and knock them out of the air. Um, mm-hmm. The keys, maybe it was even the radar from the nuclear test that knocked him out. Maybe the arrow isn't even able to understand how they got knocked out and think it was just an atmospheric charge. Maybe mm-hmm. it was a charge from the nuclear bomb itself, you know? Um, but what we what we know is that this story pops up all around the UFO community, which is super interesting. Um, the keys of Enoch, go. the last two videos we just... T- beat to death with and more videos are coming out but um the keys of enoch states that they're in the war in heaven when it comes to the rebels versus the the universals the good guys the rebels chose to traverse space 
through material spacecraft. And the Universals can do this as well, but the Rebels use technology that isn't aligned with, I know it sounds kind of corny, but the Father. And if you do more study, you'll be able to make sense. The Father has a specific mathematical frequency that allows the higher angels to traverse the universe. The rebels chose to traverse the universe through purely mechanical, physical spacecraft means using physics. Um, so they're relying on their own infrastructure and systems based off technology such as computers and electro electronics such as you know our computers again. Um, when they're traversing, when they're when they're traveling through space, these techno these systems because they're based off technology are susceptible to intrusion from environmental circumstances because the keys say their ships do not function on the frequency of the father because they use computer chips then there's angels who can inherently they don't use ships they can just with their being traverse the universe and because they um, travel the universe with just their uh, mind, body, spirit, personality. They use the frequency of the Father to to travel the universe. They are not susceptible to to being knocked out of the air with radar or atmospheric discharge, which is leading me to think that because she got knocked out of the air due to atmospheric discharge, she could be with the beings who choose to uh, use technological means, aka rebels. Sorry, long-winded, but that's how I'm thinking. If you're getting shot out of the air, man, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't think... a little bit more, though, it seems like she's trying to wake up humanity. If, if you're just really even giving us the information of the isbiness that humanity is involved with, how is that rebel-like? Because wouldn't you want to keep that under wraps at all costs? So how is that... I'm reading a little bit like further along, and it just seems like... It's trying to wake us up. Like, if you monkeys don't get with the program, you're going to destroy yourself. So, uh, how do you want to go? Do you want to get a little deeper? Yeah. So, what is it? What is it saying that is keeping us uh, contained? You know, what is what is the the nefarious act of this? this uh, <clears throat> the rebels. The rebels claim that God is fake. Yeah. The rebels will tell you, I don't really know how to put it into words, I'm going to spit as many facts out as possible, try to, try to net them and amalgamate them together. The rebels want to lie and tell you that, you know, individual freedom is the way to go, that God is fake and that Michael and his cronies such as the Ancient of Days and Gabriel use the Father as a way to force themselves upon the universe. They say we are sent from God. You have to listen to me when there is no God. That's what Lucifer is saying. That's what so, Errol saying. That's what Errol is saying. So, so by them saying they are trying to play themselves off to us as freedom fighters. Look it. We're fighting for you. There is no God. You get what I'm saying? So, like, we're here to show you the way. We, we, we want you to be the best you can be, too. But you have to break off from them. You know what I'm saying? So, like, of course, of course, Errol's going to come off with saying, like, we're trying to help you. Because they truly believe they're helping you by breaking you away from the Father, you know? Because there is no universal government, you get what I'm saying? So, like, it's, it's obviously going to sound good. They're going to sound like missionaries, celestial missionaries, right? Because they're trying to help you. But in reality, by them helping you, they're really just trying to get you to... They think they're helping you by getting you to break away from the cosmic government. Because they believe the cosmic government is totalitarian. Does that make sense? I see. So it gets even deeper. Than yeah, that. it's definitely possible. Uh, I just read another resource that we, that we might have to cover on uh, Apocryphal Scrolls. It's Allies of Humanity by 
uh, Marshall V. and Summers, and See, he specifically... People start saying that. Allies of Humanity. We're here to help you guys break the rule of Michael, right? Like, come on, dog. So, yeah, I mean, you're making conclusions before reading it. Um, it's, no, it's, oh, yeah. To sorry, me, sorry, it's, sorry about that book. I don't mean that. I was trying to make a point. My bad. Um... Yeah, you should be skeptical of anything that claims to be an Allies of Humanity. The Allies of Humanity book explains why you should be skeptical. And that's how that's part of how you know that that book specifically is probably a positive force. Uh, something that it points out is that um, there's some ET alien races who are not necessarily here for any spiritual purposes. It's basically material and trade, and um, they're trying to stabilize their own planet and... Um, they, it says that they know human psychology, they've been watching us for a long time, um, and they all want some kind of foothold because having other planets in your back pocket is a resource. Yeah. Um, and it says that they will use our religious and psychological programming in order to influence us. Yeah. And it's not necessarily because they're demonic or something, it's just because this is the nature of influence in it's the evolutionary time-space universe. It's a business deal. They it is. It is. Yeah, and it says that we need to use spiritual discernment in order to stay free and independent. Otherwise, we will actually overextend ourselves and basically fall under the influence, and we're we'll basically going to be gamed by other planets. Fuck. Right, and yeah, and so we need that. We need like real wisdom, especially like lawmakers, dude. Congress and stuff—they're asking questions about UAPs. Like this is coming out. This is this is opening. The crack is getting too wide to hold shut, and like now lawmakers are going to be making decisions eventually about how we are going to interact with extraplanetary species. We're boots on the ground. Hopefully, they watch our YouTube channel. That's what I'm saying. Dog. Some of these ideas. <laughs> Who's more qualified than otherwise, us? Otherwise, fuck. Otherwise, we're making a. We're going to DC and we're gonna sit down. And we're gonna, we're gonna, make gonna our own host council. podcasts, live podcasts, yep. and we're gonna invite to Congress. <laughs> yeah, right. Because these fools are gonna be like, "Look, shots. there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in our universe. You got You need to know these facts before you make these decisions." All right. Right. I'm trying to walk into some like Amazonian confederation, trying to just like call shots without knowing the, the local tribes and cultures, bro, you're going to get fucking, you're going to get gutted. Instead, call us. We'll Lay the land. For you. We'll translate for you. We'll tell you the difference. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it in English. We don't do telepathy yet. <laughs> <laughs> Keep fucking going. Let's go. Um, we got, what, 15 more minutes? Where are we at? Cool. Uh, okay. So... The spacecraft is operated by ISBs who use doll bodies in much the same way that an actor wears a mask and costume. It is a like a mechanical it is like a mechanical tool through which to operate in the physical world. She, as well as all the other ISBs of the officer class and their superiors, inhabit these doll bodies when they are on duty in space. When they are not on duty, they leave the body and operate, think, communicate, travel, and exist without the use of a body. The bodies are constructed of synthetic materials, including a very sensitive electrical nervous system to which each ISB adjusts themselves or tune in to an electronic wavelength that is matched uniquely to the wavelength or frequency emitted by each ISB. Each ISB is capable of creating a unique wave frequency which identifies them much like a radio signal frequency. This serves in part as identification like a fingerprint. The doll body acts like a radio receiver for the ISB. No two frequencies or doll bodies are exactly the same. Fascinating. Um, the bodies of each ISB crew member are likewise tuned into and connected to the nervous system built into the spacecraft. Uh, the spacecraft is built in much the same way as the doll body. It is adjusted specifically to the frequency of each ISB crew member. Therefore, the craft can be operated by the thoughts or energy emitted by the ISB. It is really a very simple direct control system, so there are no complicated controls or navigation equipment on board the spacecraft. They operate as an extension of the ISB. That's fire, fire, dude. That's what we were just explaining. With the, with the electromagnetic spheres that you can modulate to the personality. 
the UFO is an extent is like an extension of their already artificial physical body because they're controlling it from their consciousness which is which is not so physical um, but still holds you know mind some sort of mind we think in terms of physicality uh, and object and subject but I think that's just the only way that they can convey it to us I got and something communicate with them I got something from my channel and community I just got a transmission right now can I share it with you guys um, I'm a rebel. You fucking go to rebel. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if we're talking about the whole consciousness scheme hierarchy, right? Taylor's talking about the consciousness existing out of physical reality. Then, then animating the body, right? So now the consciousness, the thought adjuster has an interface with the body. So now the thought adjuster or the personality can interact with the physical reality, right? They have a body. This is their interface. Now that, but that body cannot traverse space and time. So now they need to like have another transceiver, another amplifier device, which would be the ship, the craft, right? The craft is that electromagnetic sphere that can amplify the consciousness that is amplified into the body, which is then again amplified onto the craft, right? So once the craft has that sphere that can amplify it, it's like creating a circuit all the way up. Now that body can just lay there and that consciousness can go through the body and transmit that electromagnetic frequency through physical materials and science, like I was talking about, the actual spheres that you can modulate electronically that link into the body, right? So when you have a sphere that links into the body with a body that links into the consciousness, you have a, you know, you have a way to actually traverse space and time. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. That's an entire vehicle to traverse the universe when they're actually up here. Yeah. And that's the only way that it could appear and itself in a physical ex domain. Yes, exactly. That's how they mm -hmm. fucking, that's how they do it. And that's how they look to us. That's how they appear to us because that's the only way they can fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. But it's really all mind. Like they don't even it is all that. mind. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> They're just putting <laughs> dirt on the mind concepts. Like, okay, I yeah. guess. The all is mind. The all is mind. There it is. Shout out to the hermetics out there. We know you're watching. <laughs> Hope you're not brother the serpent. <laughs> got them serpent brothers. Right. We're going to have to... Hey, the <laughs> fucking snakes in the grass, you got to fucking cut it. Yes, sir. Come on, what are you doing? We're all on the same prison planet, apparently. Right, let's figure this out. All right. When, are, we, are we stopping there or are we continuing? Let's get let's get to let's finish just finish this chapter, bro. We got two we got two pages. Crank it out. Let's get to chapter right, seven. Here we go. When the lightning bolt struck the spacecraft, this caused a short circuit and consequently disconnected them from the control of the ship momentarily, which resulted in the crash. Arrow was and still is an officer, pilot, and engineer in an expeditionary force which is part of a space opera. Civilization which refers to itself as the domain. The civilization controls a vast number of galaxies, stars, planets, moons, and asteroids throughout an area of space that is approximately one-fourth of the entire physical universe. The continuing mission of her organization is to secure, control, and expand the territory and resources of the domain. See, that's horseshit. That's uh, propaganda. They don't own one-fourth of the entire universe. I know. That, so we don't. So the, the problem with that statement is that... Uh, Universe, the word universe is is very relative to like um, to an origin point. So we what so our right. local universe in Uranship terms mm -hmm. has uh, like a black hole at the center, but that black hole was created by they say a Michael Sun being and a and a Mother Spirit individual individualized portion, and they expanded a section of the master universe from that. So w what my theory is is that. Us being within that local universe, we actually have trouble seeing beyond it mm. because there's like um, this is just some limitations to being in a local universe, and that's also how local universes are a bit segmented from each other. Um, that being said, Urantia does talk about how I think our telescopes will eventually see past our local universe boundaries. Yep. So there's still a big question of what what determines the universe. I mean, universe one verse is literally the definition of like. Oh, it's everything, everything. Actually, but there's also at, these individualized sectors at one point that like have history, real origin points. At one point in time in history, universe was interchangeable with galaxy. In our scientific gotcha. test. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. 
So, yeah, when they say uh, they control one-fourth of the entire physical universe, it's like, okay, the entire physical local universe, uh, the next sector up, the next sector up, the master universe, there's yeah. seven, like, um, core uh, universes in the master universe. You see, these, these segmentations are almost infinite, so, yeah. so these statements are, are very pretty relative without us understanding their view of the cosmos. Yeah, because um, one, one, one fourth in, of Satania yeah. is different than one fourth of fucking Norlashadek or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Errol pointed out that their own activities were very similar in many ways to the European explorers who discovered and claimed the new world for the Holy Father, Red the Pope, flag. and for the kings of Spain, Portugal, and later... Holland, England, France, and so forth. Europe benefited from the property acquired from the native inhabitants. However, the native inhabitants were never consulted with or asked for their permission to become a part of the domain of European nations. And the soldiers and priests they sent to acquire territory and wealth in order to advance their interests. Errol said she read in a history book that the Spanish king regretted the brutal treatment of the native inhabitants by his soldiers. He feared retribution from the gods he worshipped as described in the various testaments of the Bible. He asked the Pope to prepare a statement called The Requirement, which was supposed to be read to each of the newly encountered native inhabitants. The king hoped that the statement, whether it was accepted or rejected by the natives, would absolve the king of all responsibility for the resulting slaughter and enslavement of these people. This is it right here. This is the fucking nail in the coffin, dog. No, dude, it's not. Yes, she, it is. She's literally giving an example. No, dude, she's... And it's not... Oh, these ETs use these examples to, like, paint a picture of what they're really doing. You're right. There's a lot of ETs that are doing this exact same thing. Exactly. But it's I, fucked hold up. Hold on. Let, let me finish this. Because right, right. I think she's going to comment. She does comment. She literally comments. So stop stop giving the wrong preview. <laughs> he used this statement as justification to confiscate their lands and possessions by his soldiers and the Pope's priest. Apparently, the Pope personally did not have any feelings of guilt or responsibility on the matter. Errol thought that such actions were those of a coward, and that it is no surprise that the territory of Spain was diminished so quickly. Mm-hmm. Only a few years later, the king was dead, and his empire had been assimilated by other nations. Uh, yeah, good on... Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good point. She says that that's a cowardly opinion, and now no, here's still, what's next. I'm still on the same energy. Sorry, I, I, got a, I was a little bit... I know the end. I know how it Trigger, ends here. We know. Yeah. <laughs> I know how it ends here. This is, She's propaganda. Errol said that propaganda. this sort of Errol said that this sort of behavior does not occur in the domain. Oh, of course it uh, doesn't. Their leaders, <laughs> not in our domain, control, domain, but not power, in our. control, power. You're saying We're this the being best. is like a double agent, and they're 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 trying to say that they're good, but, but they're actuality, bad. They're a rebel. They're, but they're bad. Yeah. Well, that seems to be like a Luciferian and Satanic way to work, right? Is to like to avoid the karmic consequences of this so-called evil. Is to portray yourself, like give the facts, but give it in a way that where if you interpret it in the wrong way, you're they're not going to suffer the karma, which is essentially the Satanic and Luciferian world that we live in. It's mm-hmm. like present the facts Narrative. out to you, give it out in in weird cryptic ways. Yeah. But it's up to you to be able to decipher to see the truth. That's, oh, but I said it. That's all a lie. Sophistry. I can see. I can see why sophistry, you say it like that. Exactly, sophistry. Yes. Yeah, it's like half truths. Mm. Like yeah, it's like present a little bit of truth, but in there is actually, it's actually a fallacy. I don't know, man. It's hard. This is this is really weird to think about it like that. Like it's some kind of. A, and then it gets gnarlier when you understand the the court case on the cosmic scale is still open, and that the humans on planet Earth get to determine it. So, like, all this propaganda is shaping our viewpoints. So when we get to the mansion worlds, we'll be asked, all right, what's your viewpoint? What side are you going to vote for? (laughs) They're going to ask us, if you could go back in time, would you change anything? (laughs) And D-Bake's going to be like, if I say... If I say no, they'll say, okay, the rebels are absolved. If I say (laughs) yes... Yes, then, (laughs) right? (laughs) I think neutral. But D-Big's also like, but I love those trenches. That made me who I am. Yeah, I'm a bit. I'm going to say keep the program running. Let's see what happens. <laughs> um, Errol said that this sort of behavior does not occur in the domain. Their leaders assume, assume full responsibility for the actions of the domain and would not denigrate themselves in this fashion. Nor do, their, nor do they fear any gods, lowercase g, or have any regret for their actions. 
This idea reinforces my earlier suggestion that Errol and her people are probably atheists. No, one because they're looking at Adam and Eve as intruders. They're looking at Jesus as intruders. They're saying these are extraterrestrial organizations that have no right to interfere with humanity on planet Earth. That's what they're calling. That's not what she said. She just that's, said that they inferred. take. Res- they, she said that if she, her proposition is kind of like, look, when we go in, we offer we offer them to join us. Uh, uh, I don't know. There's there's some. I'm not going to simulate beyond what's here. No, I'm, yeah, um, I'm just saying like all this sort of behavior does not occur to the domain, and there she literally referred to the Spanish Inquisition of the Pope like t- usurping planets. So she's referring to Adam and Eve and Michael how they would be not from our planet. They're from a different planet. They're from an advanced ET, ancient, old empire. Yeah, she's, not saying, she's not saying that. You're kind of reading that in. Like Jesus, they would probably see Jesus as just a spiritual teacher who taught about how to be an A's B. You're right. I am, I am definitely putting the word Jesus in there. The only teacher they mention is the Buddha in the entire thing. Oh, and, yeah, or, and Lao Tse. Uh, yeah, I was, or yeah, I'm sorry. Well, wow. but what, but who are they referring to as the Spanish king, usurping land and interests? Who who are they referring to? Whoever the king was it when that happened. I don't know. No, it's an analogy for a cosmic scale. And they're saying the domain doesn't do that. They're literally saying Michael and Gabriel go over to planets and take over control of them, like the Spanish king did, and they're taking resources. In the domain, we don't do that. We offer freedom. The humans need to stand up and shun. It's the same thing as the Lucifer Declaration of Independence. All planets should be No, I disagree. Again, you're like reading in a character that totally isn't there in the analogy. There, She's presenting the analogy. And this also happens because she, she talks, she mentions... European explorers mentions other alien races. For Holy Father Pope. That's literally what she says. So, okay, no, she's comparing and contrasting their domain expedition because look versus they say the their empire. domain is trying to expand it's versus it's theirs versus no versus human empire this, this, don't don't expand it to old empire yet she's just saying like look the domain yes we want to expand we interact with other planets we do like we have a, a growth mentality um, but we don't but we don't do it the same way that your kings did it she's using that example because she read the history books she's like look yeah, we, we are expanding, <laughs> um, but we're not going to do it like this. I'm th- I'm thinking she's uh, using we take the full history books to, and speaking using those terms as an example for the old empire, aka Michael's empire, and then saying, yeah, "Look, we're, we're the domain. Again, we don't we, do that. We're not going to we're not going to land on your planet and try to influence you like Michael and Adam and Eve did." Just like, I, just yeah, like, I, like I disagree. Remember I think Lucifer you're getting saying that Declaration of Liberty for all ahead. planets and mortal. You know, I see a, I see a. Yeah. I see it both ways. It's still it's there. It's possible. Unclear. Uh, what, is uh, right. what is the end point of this thing? What is it trying to? What is it trying? What is the main idea that this thing is trying to reveal to not only the nurse and whoever reads this? What is it trying to reveal? That's all you have yeah. to look at. It's trying to reveal that you're a god trapped in a body on Earth and that you've been alive for trillions of years creating divine planets and organisms, which is kind of fucking crazy. We are, in a, in a way, in a sense, we have that spark in us. So if, yeah, trying if to you identify, here, that we've if you identify with that. the Father Fragment, you are a co-creator. That's that's literally the only correct way to be like a cosmic creator. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it says that. And actually. so I think there's rebels with thought adjusters too. Yeah, not everyone has an adjuster. I, I might have misspoke earlier when I say everyone. No, has no, 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 no. That's I'm a specific. Saying, I'm just I'm just saying that there are rebel humanoid beings in the cosmos that have thought adjusters mm-hmm. that say I have a thought adjuster. Theref- and it's still communicating with me, therefore I get to enact what I want, regardless of what the universe will say. I have my divine presence. I know I see. what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, like, like the, what, I, I, we're going. We've already had this conversation, such as what's that? What's that girl's name that's mentioned? The keys of Enoch. Um. She revealed herself to to Billy Meyer. Semyaza. Semyaza. Yes. 
Uh, remember, they specifically talked about the Nikizi Enoch Asim Yaseh from a rebel planet who all they still hold thought adjusters and they are still, because they are in communication with their thought adjuster, technically speaking, they're a bit, they have the ability to do what they want. But they were, they used a different mode, a different technique uh, than the universe. But technique. humans are doing the same thing. Like, we can always use, look, the Pope and a lot of religions use this idea that they're appointed by God or they're connected to God in order to enact their own thing. But, like, a lot of people like easily uh, misconfer what is the spiritual advice from a spiritual advisor versus their own evil intentions manifesting out of their subconscious intentions and conscious intentions. Um, that's its own matrix. Right. Uh, I'm gonna keep reading. You yeah, ready? So let's kick this out. We got four more paragraphs. Right? Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, in the case of the acquisition of Earth by the Domain, the rulers of the Domain have chosen not to openly reveal this intention to the native inhabitants of Earth until a later time when it may or may not suit their interests to reveal themselves. For the present time, it is not strategically necessary to make the presence of the Domain Expeditionary Force known to mankind. In fact, until now, it has been very aggressively hidden for reasons that will be revealed later. The asteroid belt near Earth is a very small but important location for the domain in this part of space. Actually, some of the objects in our solar system are very valuable for use as low-gravity space stations. <clears throat> They're interested primarily in the low-gravity satellites in the solar system, which consists mainly of the side of the moon facing away from Earth, and the asteroid belt, which was a planet, that was destroyed billions of years ago to a lesser degree Mars and Venus doom structures synthesized from gypsum or underground bases covered by electromagnetic force screens are easily constructed to house the domain forces um, and that is if you want to cross reference something uh, I think it's is it Malek the law of one talks about what the ash that the Astro belt used to be uh, a planet and it got exploded and I think they call it Melek or something. M E. Melek. Moloch. Yeah, Moloch. Moloch. Just kidding. That's a demon. Yeah. yeah, that's a. Anyway, there's that. other. There's that's a pop. That's also a popular in the UFO, in the UFOlogy to say that thing. So I don't know what the source of that data is. Uh, once an area of space is acquired by the domain and becomes a part of the territory under its control, it is treated as the property of the domain. The space station near the planet Earth is important only because it lay along a path of the domain expansion route toward the center of the Milky Way galaxy and beyond. Of course, everyone in the domain is aware of this, except for the people of Earth. The domain. Mm. That damn domain, man. Domain. Either they're rebels or a neutral party that's really strong. I think they're a neutral party that's really strong. If they were rebels, dude, they wouldn't even wake us up to to our freedom, to our sense of freedom that we have. Because mm -hmm. that's just dangerous in itself. Like the, even just speaking the isbiness. You have to read. You have a, to read the Lucifer Manifesto. Well, how I see Luciferianism on Earth is they're not waking us up to any sort of divinity whatsoever. They're keeping us engrossed in TikTok and Fox News and. CNN and nobody has any clue of their divine innate qualities right so the fact that this has even given us a little spark of that to me paints the picture that there's they're not evil unless they're playing some kind of 5d chess where they're so evil they're giving us a sense of that freedom but not aligning us with God that's that's really that's really advanced evil <laughs> that's that's a Lucifer you know manifesto, I mean? manifesto straight up the entire time it was true yeah. false liberty the declaration of liberty false and true liberty so it the, uh, the original cult. lucifer man sorry go ahead uh derek not derek Drew. Drew. any cult yeah. will try and convince you with half truths and stuff you know yeah so i am a spiritual like, being having players. a human experience oh, that's, well, we are that's though. true <laughs> that's it's thing, true it's truth. true but like people okay Here's the thing, like Aleister Crowley, he's like, you know, all in that metaphysical reality stuff. He he would say something like that. He's like, the truth is, you are, you know, a consciousness and like just interacting with the body. But that doesn't mean that phrase alone is not divine 
it, it doesn't teach you anything about divine values. Right, it's just not, and it's not true actually, the, the, the values that you can extract from what she's saying tells you more about her sense of spirituality than if she just says the term God or not. Because again, their definition of God may be you know very different from their context and understanding of the universe and consciousness. And ultimately, we know that the finality journey is like it's really hard. Like you gotta, and so we don't even know like what status beings these are. And so I think it's more likely that they're a neutral party coming across Earth as they're they're moving through their own universe or galaxy, Expansion. coming across Earth. Yeah. Um, I I don't think. And that's another reason is that, like, a lot of people try to paint people as either service to self or service to others. They want to say, oh, they're bad or they're good. Yeah. Um, it's Polarity. just not really like that. But, um, but yeah, uh, Dedrick's right. The Lucifer Manifesto itself um, sounded like a liberating concept to a lot of beings, like angelic beings, who they never, they couldn't travel to, like, the central universe and actually meet the Father and part of that is because of the limitation of their, some of the limitation of their being. Um, like, they can't traverse that dynamic range. Um, and they're skeptical of the finalities that come back. And, like, you know, when they ask them, it's like they can just, they can tell them some things about it. But, like, it's the same here on Earth. Is like, unless you go there yourself, you, like, it's hard to really believe it or let it have an effect on you. But, like, what resonates... You know, it really resonated with me when I read the Thought Adjuster papers. That resonated on a level that was internal, and it profoundly changed how I perceived God. So instead of, you know, I stopped doing these, like, you know, the monologues of, of English prayer in my head, like, talking outward, and I was like, oh, like, you know, this is, like, a piece that's with me. Like, I'm still, I'm going to, I'm not going to pretend like I am the Thought Adjuster speaking, but like if I if I take this internal view, um, it takes what happens is that people externalize their responsibility with religion, and um, they believe in in like concepts and like guarantees that are given by like other beings who are like, look, if you just say this prayer, I guarantee you you will get into heaven. And that's a sense of conformity and security because if you believe that 100%, you can live your life and you can nix out some of the fear. But there's still an underlying uh, fear that you don't know about where it's that you you haven't you haven't actually like taken personal responsibility for the things that you need to change in order to sync up with your internal adjuster. When I figured that out, I, w- I was able to take on a new sense of responsibility. And people all the time, they externalize, they say, oh, like, God did this for me, you know, this happened, where it's mm-hmm. like, it's just not, it's not the case. We know they that the Father does not agency. interact personally. Yeah, God does, the, God the Father does not interact personally with the material universe except through the adjusters. Yep. And obviously, you got the you got the creator beings, which are an expression of God, but still, that's not... That's not the same as like God is like God's not changing the weather for you. Like thanking God because the weather changed and now you can make it to this event is like that's not God that did that. That's the system that that's the system of material creation that does ultimately come from the intelligent being known as God, but it's not God's it's not you don't thank God for that. That's like it's like me making like a yeah. It's like if I make a computer and then that computer helps you do your homework, um, you think and then God you like the computer. Go, right. But it's like even if I'm like standing right by, I'm like, oh, don't thank me. Like you just used that thing that I made to help you do that thing. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a loose example because like you could thank me because I created the computer. But people don't think of it like that. They externalize no, you, their you responsibility. Externalize the responsibilities. That's a way. That's a really good way to put it. One, it's not in the external reality. It's in the internal adjuster reality. Because, like you said, the only way that God interacts with the universe is through the adjuster. So, why are you trying to look for the answers in the external? It's very, very interesting. And with that, we're gonna end part one of six million for the alien Roswell interview. <laughs> We got through, yeah. We got through like half of two chapters, and it was fucking super intense already. Um, 
Will, will Errol be a rebel? Or will Errol redeem herself? And <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible. One more time. Ready? <laughs> Is Errol a rebellious personality? Or does she side with the truth? <laughs> <laughs> To well, be is continued. The empire, <laughs> is the old empire and Errol's domain both two sides of the same coin? Ooh, Ooh. There it is. <laughs> to be continued in the next episode of Forbidden Scrolls. Dun, dun, dun. Follow me on Instagram at Deepak the Wise, Gary Lee Haskins, <laughs> Tay Chilla, <laughs> and Drew Matthew. All right. Thank you for listening. Hey. I hope you guys got to. Uh, I hope you guys stayed with us because yeah, we're going left, right, up, down. But I know that's how you guys like it. I know you like it when we shake our hips. I know I know you like it when we don't gotta stick up our ass. And uh, shout out to the ET, shout out to my star seeds, D Big Dwise, Gary Lee Haskins, Tay Chilla, Drew Matthew, S C Park. Drew Matthew and S C Park is the same thing, but alright. Peace. Q Space Jam. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> oh. Thank you for saying. Good chat. Good chat. That started it started off kinda of-